Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to start into our very first iPhone app using the Swift language. Uh, just to give you an idea of what we're building here, if you look at the iPhone 8 simulator, we're having a simple label, simple button. Label says my first app, button says say something, and we click on say something, changes the text to hello world. Nothing more basic than that. So uh, what we're going to do now is create a new project to be able to do this. So I'm just going to what you want to do is you want to open Xcode and get to this window here. So we have here a template options for a new project. We're only going to focus on iOS and single view application for this. And other options here are like watch OS, TV OS, and uh, cross platform. So we'll choose iOS single application. Hit next. I'm going to call it uh, first app. You can give it a name, uh, whatever name you want. Team, well, team is only related to when you're publishing to the App Store. Uh, you know, organization name, company name, uh, org identifier, uh, language Swift. So these are all related to when you're publishing to the App Store. For our little tutorial learning here, it's, you know, just hit next, give it a home. All right, so the first thing you'll notice when you create a brand new project is that you come up with a view like this where you have Xcode. Now, if you're now this is going to assume you're a beginner to Xcode as well. So on the left hand side here, you have your file navigator, but you'll notice that there's some icons just above the file navigator. So this allows you to show you your files in the project. Uh, this will show you uh, uh, you have here your uh, class hierarchy. This is probably the other common one. Uh, search within project, uh, any errors or issues, uh, and so on. There's test information, breakpoints, and so on. But we'll just focus for the most part. You'll ever mostly, especially as a beginner, ever care about just the project explorer and search, search within your project. Those are the most two useful ones, other than errors as well, but those are the most common ones you'll use. By default, you come to your project settings, so it has the name of your project here, and then you have your uh, project settings here, mostly useful just for when you're publishing to the store. Uh, you can spe set your orientation. Uh, you can specify uh, app icons, launch screen information. If you want to bring in any additional frameworks, we get more advanced. So you can hit the plus sign. You can add other frameworks like AV Foundation, AV Kit, uh, and so on. You can add those frameworks in as well. Uh, but for now, we're keeping it really simple. We have the app delegate file. The app delegate file, its purpose is to be like the class that manages the entire app lifecycle. So it did finish launching is a useful method. There's other methods here that with explanations related to different points when the app, like minimizing, going in background and stuff like that. We'll skip view controller, come back to that in a sec, but you have here uh, main.storyboard and launchscreen.storyboard. So launchscreen.storyboard is interface builder's file for your splash screen. So here, what you would do is you'd put an image or some text like loading, and you would uh, you would uh, that would be displayed for, a, for for one second, and then it would go to your main storyboard, which is over here, which is where we're gonna have different views uh, for our application. The assets file is for adding images, so you can have your app icon images, splash images, other images as well. Info.plist is a settings file uh, for all of your project settings beyond what you see in the project settings at the very beginning. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with launch screen dot storyboard. We'll put something very simple like a loading indicator. Now we're going to have to rely on the right side of the screen. And if you don't see any of these views, these icons here in the corner, top left, right corner, these can hide and unhide those certain areas of Xcode. In fact, there's one that's, un that's hidden right now, the bottom one, which is in the middle. This will show us uh, breakpoint information and console error messages as well, or con just console messaging. And if you only see one, you can use these buttons right here to hide and unhide them as well. So let's start with just adding a label. So we have here uh, on this right hand side, we'll talk about this area in a sec, but, the, but at the, the bottom third, this has all kinds of tools and palettes. We only really care about the third one. The third option here has our, our object library. So all kinds of objects here. It has a search bar at the bottom. Uh, so you can scroll through at your convenience and see you know, what your options are for bringing onto the screen. But I'm going to start with looking for a label. If I drag that label, I'm going to drag it anywhere on the screen, throw it on. 
I can resize that label. And you'll see that there's nice little guide bars that you can bring in. And now what I want to do is I want to modify this label. So I've just brought a label onto the screen in LaunchScreen.Storyboard. You'll notice that this top area, this is where I can modify the properties for that item. So whatever item is highlighted or clicked on, you'll see these boxes surrounding it. That item can be edited over here in this area. So there are five, oh, sorry, six areas here to choose from. The first two are almost never used. Uh, so this has like settings for the file itself. So in this case, launchscreen.storyboard. This is a help option. This is your identity inspector. We'll, we'll have a use for this later on. This fourth one is the most commonly used one, which is the attributes inspector. The fifth one is the size inspector. So for location, X, Y, and width and height, as well as any auto layout constraints can be found here. Last one, is the connections inspector. So we're going to learn how to connect things up in a moment. We're going to use the connections inspector. But for now, we're going to change the attributes of that label. So we're going to click on the attributes inspector. And you'll see over here, you see the word label, which matches up with label over here. So I'm going to change this word to loading with a few dots. And you can go further than that. You can see that the alignment, you can maybe make that center justified. Above it is font. So if I just use the up down arrow, it just changes the size. But maybe I want to have a nicer font. So I click on the letter T and change system to custom. And when I change it to custom, all the fonts available on the machine are available here. So all kinds of fonts to play with at your leisure. Feel free to try out whatever fonts you want. I'm going to go with Chalk Duster, more of an educational look and feel. And they can you can change it to regular. Other fonts have like bold, bold italic here under style. So you can use those styles as well. This particular font only has regular. Change the size. Let's increase it. Hit done. And then maybe you want to change the color. So you can click on the color there. And you might, you'll, you'll see a, a window like this, but you probably see something like this right now where it's all black, right? And you're probably wondering, you know, how do I, how do I get some color? Well, you switch that sli slide that I just switched back all the way to this end, and you can go with shades as well. So you really get that precise color you're looking for, and just choose the color you want. All right, so you can choose the color you want. I'll go with green. But if you had an RGB number, for example, you can see that you have these different icons up here. You go to second icon, you have a choice for RGB. Right? Hex color, hex number, or CMYK as well, and grayscale, HSP, so on. So you can really get that custom color that you're looking for. All right, so that is our splash screen. All right, so now that we're done our launch screen, what we want to do is we want to move on to main.storyboard. And let's put a couple of things onto the storyboard. So I'm going to throw a label at the top and just put the text my first app. So now that we know how to edit a label, we can go ahead and do that again. So I'll put uh, my first app, maybe center justify it again, change the font from system to custom, change the style to go with a chalk duster again and increase the font and change the color to green again let's go consistency consistency is important in anything you do now we have our first app label let's add a button so I search for the word button in my search bar drag that over and stretch it out. And you'll see that the look at the, the attributes for the button change. So change the text here from button to put the words the say something. And you can change the font as well. 
It's up to you if you want to go with a customized font. Um, you can go Helvetica. Uh, anything you want. I'll do like a career. Alright, you can change the color as well. So you have text color. Choose, I don't know, red, orangish red. Right, and so there's your, there's your button. Now, when you want to test out this app to run, you can run and see how it looks like. Just by going up here on the top bar, you have a play button to run. But before we do that, let's see what our options are for where we want to run this on. Right here where it says iPhone 8 Plus, you can choose other simulators. So you have the choice between, now if you had your own physical device, like an iPhone or iPad, if it was plugged in, you would see it here, where it says no device connected to my Mac. Uh, but otherwise, in this case, we can use an iPad, iPad Air 2, iPad Pro, iPhone 5, 6, 7, Pluses, SC or X. Uh, we'll just do an iPhone 8. And when we run, it launches, loading comes up, and then my first app and say something. And when we're done running, we can just hit the stop button and it'll stop the app. And you can kind of see the bottom uh, the bottom there that I have the, it, it goes back to the iPhone screen itself. Now suppose you're using a different device, like maybe you're using iPhone 8, right? Or sorry, 8 plus. You can actually change the look and feel because this screen is designed for iPhone 8. Maybe you want to see what it looks like on an iPhone 8 plus. So you click on here where it says view as iPhone 8. And you can see the different iPhones and iPads available at your disposal. You can choose a different size, right? So that's what it'll look there. That's what it'll look like here, uh, and so on. We'll have a future lesson on auto layout and how to adjust for different screens. Orientation as well, portrait versus landscape as well. All right, so you can do that as well. Now, let's write some code to manipulate that label. So. This screen is known as a view or a view controller. And every view controller has a supporting class file uh, called, well, in this case, viewcontroller.swift. So you have different names for your view controllers. So in this case, we have viewcontroller.swift. And uh, you can click on it, and you'll see uh, view controller extends UI view controller. So the colon represents extends. and this is the parent object, UI view controller. So UI view controller is always subclass to whatever view controller name you want to have. In future apps, you'll see us use multi-page apps. So we'll have multiple view controller objects, one for each screen that we want to bring on to, into our app. Override, uh, override func view did load. This method is kind of like the constructor for the app in a way. Uh, oh, sorry, for the screen. Uh, it's like the constructor for the screen in a way. What this does is it allows you to auto-execute code upon loading onto the screen. There are other similar methods or sister methods like view will appear, view did appear, view did disappear that play a similar role. There's also awake, uh, awake from nib, uh, those type of methods as well can also be uh, brought in. And they all execute at different points in the view lifecycle. So suppose you had some code that you auto-executed here, but it wasn't running fast enough or properly. You might try view will appear or view did appear. Uh, to, to see if maybe that's the correct area to to do this on. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is we're going to write some code to support this screen and do what we want it to do. So first thing we need to do is we need to create a couple of, or we need to create a, an outlet, right, to support that label, because we want to modify the label. So we're going to use a keyword called IB outlet. So at IB outlet and var for variable. And we'll say LBL hello. That'll be the name of our label. Now it'll extend UI label with an exclamation mark. So now this variable, this keyword IB outlet, what this is saying is it's saying make this variable LBL hello available in, in our storyboard so that we can connect it to a real label. And it's of type UI label. So it'll match up. 
So that's the whole purpose of it. Now, what we want to do is we want to create an event handler for that button to change the text of LBL hello to something new like hello world. So the keyword to create an event handler is IB action. And we'll say func. I'm going to call it say hello. Now the arguments passed in will be sender. And you can say any. Or if you're very sure about the data type that uh, that'll be connected to, connect like UI button, you can use UI button instead. Uh, for now, we'll keep it as any. Now, well, if someone clicks on this button, I just want to change the label to hello world. So I'll say lbl hello dot text equals hello world. So now I have a label and I have an event handler and I have a screen. The question is, how do I connect these things all together so that everything works nicely? So now that I have this here, I can jump back to main.storyboard. And I want to be able to see how to connect those things. Well, the connections inspector, the last icon here, the connections inspector actually has all of our options for connecting. So I click on that. But remember I said, whatever is highlighted will be visible here. So earlier we saw, we clicked on the label, we changed the properties to the label. We clicked on the button, we changed the properties to the button. Well, all of our properties are inside the view controller. So where's the view controller? How do we, what do we do there? Well, this yellow circle, this yellow circle represents view controller, as you see from the pop-up. If I click on view controller, the properties for view controller and connections, in this case, for the view controller will be here. So under outlets, any variable you create will be listed here. So always look under outlets for, uh, for your label. Now, I see here LBL hello. So if I mouse over the empty circle, it turns into a plus sign, meaning I'm ready to connect. So now if I click on my mouse or my trackpad, and I drag to the label, and I let go, it has now made a connection to that label. But I also create an event handler. Event handlers are at the bottom under received actions. You see here it says, say hello with sender. In Objective-C, it's a bit easier to read because it just says say hello. It omits the with sender part, so it's easier to read. But now, suffice to say, my event handler is here under received actions. So if I mouse over the empty circle for that, it turns into a plus sign. And if I click, I can drag to my button and I let go. But this time, a menu comes up. And the menu is interesting because it has all these possibilities for an event being executed. So it's asking me, you know, how do I want this event executed? Well, for buttons, we're only ever going to care about touch up inside. So meaning if my fingers inside the buttons bounds, and I've let go of the screen, then it'll execute. So if I click on that, it has now made a connection to that button. So now let's give it a run and see if my button works. All right, it's got loading. You got my first app, say something, you click on say something. It changes the text to hello world. So now congratulations, you have built an app that you can, that'll be your first step into moving on to other apps and being able to grow your knowledge of iPhone. The purpose of this app was just to get your feet wet with Xcode to understand how to create an event handler and how to create a label that will be modified in your screen.